Our thought for today is money talks, but all mine ever says is goodbye. <laughs> today we look at a millionaire who became a saint, St. Catherine Drexel, the great saint of Philadelphia, born in 1858, as you know, the same year the historic church was built over here at St. Mary of Sorrows, same year the Immaculate Conception was defined, born into a very wealthy family, her grandfather had come over from Europe and had amassed a great fortune as a money trader and a banker. Then her own father inherited the banking business. So by the time Catherine Drexel was born, as well as her other sisters, they were heirs to a vast fortune. And we know that Catherine's mother died when Catherine was only five weeks old. And she was sent to live with her uncle. And then after about the age of two, her father remarried a very devout Catholic woman, and they had a chapel in their home. They would pray every day. It was so inspiring for her as a young girl to see her father come home from work, from the banking industry, and spend 30 minutes kneeling before the Blessed Sacrament and spending 30 minutes in prayer. So we, she was raised in a family that, of course, of great wealth, but they would also open up their home a couple of days a week to give out food and clothing to the poor in that area that would come to visit them. They would also donate to many charities, especially the orphanages and the other poor and needy in the Philadelphia area. Even as a young girl, Catherine kept a prayer journal, sort of a secret prayer journal, talking about her spiritual life, and she was very devout. She wanted to do God's will in her life. She knew she was blessed, and even when she received her allowance, which was substantial every month, she would give a great portion of that to the poor. Her family had a summer home on the outskirts of Philadelphia, as well as their mansion in Philadelphia. The family owned their own railroad car, would travel by railroad. She had the finest tutors. She had, for example, doctors teach them you know, science and anatomy. She'd have professional musicians teach her and her sisters piano and other musical instruments. She'd have, was educated with, in philosophy and painting and art and music and really all of the sciences and arts of the day. So when she became a young woman, she even had a marriage proposal, but she did not accept that. She was introduced into high society, but that left her really unmoved. She really felt that God was calling her to do something else. And after her mother and father, mother and stepmother and father died, she and her sisters inherited this vast fortune, millions and millions of dollars. And they say that they would just live on the interest. They would, were at that time receiving $1,000 a day in interest. And she had all this money and, and yet she knew that God was calling her to something more. She did have some health issues, and then she had this spiritual struggle. So she and her sisters traveled to Europe to visit the resorts and the spas of Europe, but they also, of course, went to the Vatican. And there they had a private audience with Leo XIII. And up, up to this point, Catherine had donated much money, a huge amount of money, to the Black and Indian missions, to the African American and Native American missions throughout the country. She would even go and travel by train or stagecoach to visit these schools that she had donated money towards. And she told the Holy Father, Holy Father, they need more nuns, they need more missionaries. Please send a religious order to work with these um, young men and women throughout the United States. And he looked at her and said, you be the missionary. Don't just give of your money, give of yourself. And she was sort of in shock and she you know, ran out of the Vatican weeping, and she realized that she thought about it, that God was calling her to become a religious sister. So she did enter the convent in Pittsburgh, and then two years later founded her own congregation, the Missionary Sisters of the Blessed Sacrament for the Black and Indian Missions. And so she would be the mother superior of that, just like Mother Teresa. And she, she would work her entire life, and all the money that came from her trust fund would be used for the missions and to establish the schools. She would establish Xavier University in New Orleans. She would establish over 50 schools throughout 
oh, the whole West and the Southwest, and she would, herself would visit them. She would do this until she had a heart attack in 1935, then for the next 20 years she spent praying before the Blessed Sacrament. And you can see that even though she had all this great wealth, she lived a life of poverty. You can still see at the museum in Philadelphia, at the Cathedral of Peter and Paul, the pencil stubs that she would use to write her letters. She would always give the children in the school new pencils and she would take their pencil stubs and use them until they were no longer able to be used. You see her shoes, which were, had many holes in it that she uh, sewed and patched herself. So she herself lived a life of extreme poverty, even though she gave all of her money to the poor. They say that by the end of her life, over $12 million of her inheritance had been distributed to the poor, which would be about $1.2 billion today. Well, maybe that was yesterday. Today it'd be $1.3 billion, right, <laughs> with inflation. But you see, the, her whole life was a life of almsgiving, a life of prayer before the Blessed Sacrament, all of these Lenten things that we're trying to do, more prayer, sacrifice, which she was a great woman of sacrifice, and of course, almsgiving. Probably no saint has ever given more to the poor and the needy than the great St. Catherine Drexel. A couple of years ago, her her body was moved from the mother house in Philadelphia into the cathedral of Saints Peter and Paul. So that is now the national shrine of Catherine Drexel. When you go to Philadelphia, get some good soft pretzels and cheesesteaks, make sure you visit the cathedral of Peter and Paul and pray at the tomb of Mother, C of Mother, Seton, Mother Catherine Drexel. And she was beatified in 1988 and canonized in the year 2000 and each of the miracles, one for her beatification and one for her canonization, had to do with hearing. The first was a young man who had such a bad ear infection, it damaged the bones. And her, his family prayed to St. Catherine Drexel and it healed itself without any medical treatment. And, and after 14 years of investigations, it, it was declared a miracle. And that brought about her beatification. And then a young girl who had been born deaf was also given her hearing through the intercession of St. Catherine Drexel. So if you go to Philadelphia today, pray at her tomb, visit the uh, shrine and the museum of her, and pray today to her for the healing of all racial tensions. She is the patron saint of, of racial healings and tensions and patron saint of philanthropists. So we pray today, St. Catherine Drexel, pray for us.